Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about box plots, regular box plots, and modified box plots. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how are they constructed? How are they constructed? Okay, so to construct a box plot or a modified box plot, we go ahead and we use the five number summary. If you have no idea what the five number summary is, make sure you go back and watch the previous video on the five number summary. Okay, and the five number summary has a minimum, it has a quartile one, the median has a Q3, and it has a max. Okay, so this is how we construct it. We draw a little XY coordinate, and the minimum is going to be the bottom whisker. Okay, and then we draw a line, and we're going to get to a rectangle. The beginning of the rectangle is going to be Q1, the first quartile. So let's just draw a random rectangle here. So this area right here is going to be Q1. This right here is going to be the minimum. Okay, and then you cut this line is where the median goes. So this is the median. The end of the rectangle is your third quartile. So right here is your Q3. And then there's a long line there, or a line there, and it ends at your max. This would be a regular, regular box plot. The only difference between a regular box plot and a modified box plot is the modified box plot show outliers. Okay, so if you don't know what an outlier is, make sure you watch that video. Modified box plots show outliers. Okay, so this could be, it's not necessarily tricky, but you have to know, because the question is, is it's going to have an outlier. It shows outliers as basically just dots. They show, they show up as dots or symbols outside, outside the whiskers. And the, this here is a whisker. outside the whiskers okay so let's say we had a lower outlier it would be like this it would be like an X but the question is when did, where does the whisker start so the whisker starts at the data point that is not an outlier so the next data point, so this, you might have three outliers out over here. This one is the da next data point who's not an outlier. It's the lowest point that's not an outlier. So this is going to be the same. This is my Q1. This is my median. This is my Q3. And then the same thing here. Let's say we have a couple outliers here. So this is the data point. The next lowest data point that's not an outlier and I'll show you on the example when this should be used so we use these a couple different times so in general you could use these really for symmetric or skewed but we like using them for skewed data skewed data and also for comparing this is one of my favorites. If I'm comparing two different different distributions, okay, say of scores, I love looking at side by side box plots. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at, at an example each. So I'll bring in my ca trusty calculator, and I did this time put this, the data in. So here's the test scores this year in your statistics class. Okay, so before we even start, you want to label your graph. So I'm just going to label these test scores. Make sure you label your graphs, test scores. Okay, and you want some sort of a um, scale. You want to scale your graph also. So my lowest number was a 58. So I'll go ahead and start at a 50. And I'll just go in, up in increments of 10.
Okay, so let's go ahead and just do this one by hand first. So we're going to find the, let's look to see where I have this data in. So 89, 72, 98. I have this data in my list one, so I'm going to go stat, calc, enter. And you guys should be getting comfortable doing this by now. So my minimum, my minimum is 58. So that's where my first whisker is going to be. Let's go ahead and choose a different color. Let's do it in black. Okay, that's my minimum. So this right here would be 58. Now I'm going to scroll over to that one, which is a little bit past my Q3, which is 73. Now I'm going to go to my median, which is 87. I'm going to go down to my Q3, which is 95 and my max which is 100 okay so median and 100 we will be going over shapes so this is a that's a regular box pot okay so the only difference between this and a modified is the modified would actually show outliers. So you'd have to double check. You'd have to check these numbers for outliers. But looking at these, I don't necessarily see anything that jumps out at me as an outlier. Okay. So let's do the same thing here. This is another example. And if you take a look, you could see that I did change something around here. I did change something around. So we would have to do a test for an outlier here. But on this one, I'm going to do a modified. I'm going to do a modified box plot. This, even though I'm, if I did this problem for real, I would check for, I'm looking at this number right here. So I would definitely check for a lower outlier, which is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. But I'm going to go ahead and do this one on a calculator. Okay. So I want to go to second, y equals, and I'll show you the difference in your calculator. And hit enter. Okay, so basically I have two box plots here. One, okay, one, if you look at it, it has some few dots over there. Okay, so that, that's a modified box plot. That's the one that's going to check for outliers. Okay, and I have my data in my list too. Okay. So now what I want to do is go ahead and graph this thing, which is zoom and nine. Okay, so so I was correct. This number over here is an outlier, and I could kind of scan over there if I want. That's going to be the x distance. See, it doesn't matter that the y changes. So this 31. You can just verify it by taking your cursor over there. So 31 is an outlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to scale it starting at 30, and I'm going to make them a little more narrow. Okay, so this 31 is an outlier. So since I only have one outlier, this is the most important thing. Like, where does this whisker start? Well, this whisker starts at the next number that's not an outlier. So let's scan and find the next number that's above 31. And it will be 58. So my next minimum that's not an outlier is 58. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find the rest of the data. So I'm going to do this. Now my data is in list 2, so since I'm not in list 1, I have to tell the calculator where I'm at. Okay, let's scan down. My Q1 is 72. That's the first rectangle. My median is 85. Q3 is 95. And my max is 100. Okay. So that's basically how you do it. So get comfortable doing it. The last thing I'm going to do is talk about the shape. Okay, I'm going to talk about the shape. And I have a whole bunch of shapes here. Okay, so when you're talking about shape, 
we're going to be looking at three different things. Skewed, right? Skewed left and symmetric. Okay, so what we want to do is there's a few things we want to analyze. Okay, we want to look at the, these tails right here. Okay, and we're looking at the distance from Q1 to the max and the distance from Q1 to the min. And checking to see if one is larger than the other one. And we also want to see this distance right here, which is the distance from Q1 to the median and the distance from the median to Q3. Look at this distance here. If they're all relatively the same, then that's a symmetric data set. Okay, so now let's look at this. These are relatively the same, not too much difference, but the distance from Q1 to the median is a lot smaller than the distance from median to Q3. This is a lot larger. Okay, so this is going to be skewed. Do you want to take a guess? Here, pause it and take a guess and see if you get it right. This will be skewed right. So if you got it right, you're right. Okay, and one of the reasons why is um, most of our data, 25% of our data falls here in this little in this little range right here, this little bit. 25% falls there. Okay, but but 25% is kind of spread out all the way here. It's spread out. Okay, so if this was like a histogram, if this was a histogram, most of our data falls in this little range. So this, let's go to the 50%. This would be most, most of the data. That's why these frequencies are higher. But these things, even though this is bigger going to the right, it means that more of your data is spread out. This would be the other 50%. Okay. So this would be skewed right. If you don't go, make sure you go look at this video to double check. So now let's look at these. These two things are relatively the same. Okay, the distance from Q1 to the median is about the same as the distance from Q3 to the median. Okay, but look at this tail. This tail is a lot larger than this tail. This is a lot smaller. So this would be skewed left kind of the same reason in here but these this this one data point over here is going to skew everything to the left okay so now let's look, look at this these two are relatively the same these long tails so they kind of even each other out so then we have to come look at the distance from q1 to the median look at this distance and look at this distance here this is larger so this is also going to be skewed left Okay, most of this this would kind of be an easier an easier test. Okay, and this one you could almost say, you know, slightly symmetric also for this one. Okay, now look at this one. There's no median. Okay, so there's no line for the median. So you have to think a little bit. Something out of the box. There's no line for the median. That means two things. Okay, this could mean two things. This means that Q1 equals the median, or Q3 equals the median. Okay, depending on which one it is, that's which way it's going to be skewed. So if this was the case, okay, it's going to be skewed right. I'm just going to abbreviate. And if this was the case, then it would be skewed left. And I'll kind of do one of these. So let's just say Q3 is equal to M. So this is your median right here. Okay. So essentially there is no 25% here, 50% falls between Q1 and the median. So that means that more the left side is more spread out, which will make it skewed left. Okay, and the last one here, these two things, these two distances are relatively the same. And this one here is a little longer, a little larger, that distance there. So this might be slightly, you could do two things, skewed, remember if the tail goes out it actually skews that way, skewed right, or you could say this is approximately symmetric. 
okay so that's your shapes make sure you get to look at a lot of them and make sure you get comfortable being able to tell the shapes of these box pots thank you so much for listening i appreciate it and have a nice day